Let's do this. <laughs> It's 6 p.m. on a Tuesday evening. That means it's time for Your Home with Bremer and Jones, real estate and mortgage experts. Your host, Don Bremer of the Bremer team, and Kent Jones here for Black Hawk Bank. And special guest this evening, Dr. Ryan McTague, superintendent of McHenry School District 156. Woo! Wow. Like How do you like that intro? That is some impressive music. I think that every board meeting we should come out with that kind of music before we begin <laughs> because that is that is pretty awesome. I, I always laugh because I think I should be like riding a, a horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. I, like I, I felt like I like we were in a western movie for a second. <laughs> right. I stand up and just, you know, it was incredible. And and the name of it is Adventures of Flying Jack. Is I don't that know. What it is? <laughs> Does not sound like aeronautic, uh, you know, or yeah. airplane music at all. That's oh. hilarious. Wonderful. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Of course, you are tuned in to 216 The Net. Uh, another great, great show here, Your Home with Bremer and Jones. Um, this is going to go another hour because right. uh, we've got just great royalty with us uh, today, which is fantastic. Um, and, you know, with amid everything that's going on, uh, <clears throat> people want to know about how to buy a house or get in touch with you. Don, how do they do that? They can reach me at the brummerteam.com or 847-456-6334. They can email me at brummerteam18 at gmail.com. That is awesome. Of course, if you need uh, any anything to do with your mortgages, you can reach out to me at ktjones at blackhawkbank.com or give me a call at 815-451-7699. That's awesome. Uh, and as far as uh, the good doctor, nobody talked to him. That's right. <laughs> He's too busy. <laughs> That's it. Uh, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, Doc, how do they get in touch with you? Oh, they can definitely call me at, at the district office. You can find my number on our, our district 156 website, or they can reach me at McTag Ryan uh, at D-I-S-T 156.org. Fantastic. Uh, now, uh, this is kind of a unique, uh, unique show for me anyway, um, as my family belongs to a different school district, but it's kind of all the same questions. Don, the interesting thing is, You've been part of the uh, school board for six years now. Yeah, just right? starting my sixth year. Yeah, about the same amount of time she spent in the sixth grade. That is so. true. Same <laughs> amount of time. <laughs> I so, love your zings. <laughs> so, so the 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 fun thing is though, as as we've talking and preparing for this, is that. <clears throat> There's just there, uh, there's a lot of questions out there right. um, that 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 I think need to be answered or, or at least approached, um, and this can be a good forum to kind of get it out there. Um, and uh, we've we've prepared some and we've gathered some questions from some outside people, but um, we were talking a little bit off camera. Um, you're you're a local guy, a northwest suburbs guy, um, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, was it always your goal or dream to be, a, you know, a superintendent or was it, you know, I just want to be a math teacher or whatever? Yeah, yeah I think that uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting question, you know, and, and as life happens, right, your goals always change. But I think I always wanted to be in a position after I went into administration. I've been an administrator now for about uh, 22 years. And at the end of the day, I've pretty much been in high school. So I've done every job you can possibly do in a high school from an administrative standpoint, you know, Everywhere from being a high school teacher to a department chair to a dean, director of dean, summer school principal, assistant principal, principal, and now superintendent. So I think I have a good lay of the land. I think, um, you know, every leadership position looks different and your ability to affect change looks different. And so I think I've always aspired to continue to affect change at a, at a greater level. So I would say that that no matter what position I had, I mean, I love being a principal. It's probably the greatest thing I uh, you know, some of the greatest points in my administrative career. I love being a dean, but, 
you know, I love this and they're all different. Right. Um, but that ability to affect change on a greater level has always appealed to me. That's cool. That's cool. And, and, uh, what type of student were you? I mean, were you the, were you the good guy that always helped out? Were you the class clown? What were you doing? I think I was a pretty good student. I mean, I think I probably could have done better in high school. I mean, I, I kind of laugh sometimes when I'm yelling at my, my teenager upstairs to uh, get a <laughs> learning done. But, um, you know, I, I, I like school. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, I enjoyed sports. And when I went to college, I think that's when I really buckled down and said, you know, this is important and uh, I got to take care of business here. Um, and so all throughout, I've taken school pretty seriously all the way uh, to Loyola where I got my PhD at Loyola probably about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. Wow, fantastic. Uh, I asked that because I was always the class clown. I was the guy who- Shocker. I would, I would not hard to believe. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to believe. That's a hard one to believe. <laughs> um, so here, here's, um, here's a question that I posed to uh, Mayor Jet la last week and I'll pose to you as well, is this is, this is uncharted water for you. I mean, never in your career and, and getting your master's I, and, and doctorate, I suppose, nobody ever went, well, school's going to shut down <laughs> and it's yeah. got to go all online. Yeah, you're, you're not doing any uh, pandemic 101 uh, right. education courses. So, yeah, I mean, this is pretty historic, the the scope of it. I mean, I've, I've dealt with multiple crises in my career in terms of I've had students that have been um, killed. I've had, you know, faculty deaths. I've had uh, major situations at, at a building, but, you know, never this kind of sustained crisis. Uh, crisis, so to speak, or situation where, you know, it's really changed everything that you do operationally from, from day to day. And, and how stressful, I mean, you've done a, a great job. I mean, uh, from, from the parents that I talked to and some of the students, cause I do some coaching, uh, basketball mm -hmm. and the students that, that I, that I talk with, um, they, they're pretty, I mean, it's pretty seamless. You've, you've done a great job, uh, you and the staff and the team, um, to, to really continue these children's education. I mean, it's, it's yeah. awesome uh, what you've been able to do. Um, what are, what are, and I want to cover the good things really, right? So what are some of the, what are some of the, you know, the, the blessings or, or, or things that have come out of this that you didn't expect uh, that just made you go, wow, this is something. It's a great. Yeah. And I, and I think, yeah, it's a very good question. And, you're exactly right in terms of I am so incredibly proud of our students and our, our faculty members and our administrators and their ability to step up, you know, from day one and say, hey, you know, we're, we're now going to move to this different paradigm. And, you know, there's there's no time to kind of learn on the job. You know, we've got to move forward and take all of the, the skill, all of the training, everything we've been preparing for and, and flip the switch, so to speak. And, you know, I have to be honest, we were very, very well prepared. You know, three years ago, our school board, um, you know, we moved, uh, this is my fourth year, and it was one of the first things we did when we came on, uh, move forward with an innovation plan. And that innovation plan not only in included a device for every student, and that device is important, but equally as important was our learning management system to where uh, we could house all of our curriculum. We could, you know, have those virtual conversations. We could upload tests and, and, and homework uh, and our grade books all on one platform. And we did extensive professional development with our teachers, including hiring um, digital coaches that have been working with our teachers for three years. And so we had all of this prep taking place. And I have to be honest, you know, when you, you never really have a chance to fully test it. But then when, you know, we had to move to full digital learning, we were able to take all of those skills, all that preparation, flip the switch, uh, and so far, we've had everything necessary, I think, to be very successful and, and really provide not just uh, a, a very good comprehensive learning experience for our students, um, but also um, a social, emotional and supportive experience for our kids, uh, utilizing the technology and, and all of the different learning management systems that we've set up. You know what I haven't heard through this whole pandemic is they should learn cursive. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, we haven't heard that in a long time. You know what? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty I, good. I have not heard that as, as everybody's on there. <laughs> Oh, we're in high school. We stopped that a little while ago, so I think we're <laughs> at this point. Um, and I forgot to say, right off the top, folks, if you're tuning in, of course, there is the uh, you, we have to cover our faces now in places that uh, you you are not socially distanced. You'll see uh, we've got yellow yellow tags on the wall. So this one over my shoulder right here is seven feet. So. We are actually, I'm six, seven, eight feet. I'm in the safe zone. So that's why Don and I are not wearing masks uh, today uh, because uh, we are, we have that distance. And he has really bad breath. So we have to do that anyway. It's uh, it's Michigan cherry coffee. Seriously. (laughs) Her hair was straight. (laughs) Yes, it was. Oh, goodness. Um, So, so looking forward. are, are you in the in the team and the board? Are you guys looking at at, at changing the way school is for the twenty twenty one school season? Is there more opportunity for uh, smaller class sizes or social distancing? What, are, what what's going on there? Well, I I think right now for for returning to school in the fall is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much of that is going to depend on the guidance from the state. It's going to you know, depend on the guidance from the governor. I mean, obviously, our wish is to return to school full time, you yeah. know. Uh, but, you know, the governor spoke today and it sounds like there's going to be some steps uh, and some requirements that we have to meet in order to open up fully where we can probably have, you know, full time school in the way that we're used to having full time school. Uh, and we'll just have to see what that guidance looks like. It's relatively new. Um, we are preparing for whatever may come in the fall. So whether that be continuing digital learning full time uh, in a greater capacity, um, we are prepared for that. If it means that we're going to go back to school full time, that would be awesome. We're ready for that. Um, if there's some type of hybrid experience to where either it's a split shift uh, where or a, an alternate day type of schedule, we're preparing for that because you know, you may, the, the thing that the schools are going to have to face is that even as they begin to lift some of the restrictions, um, we're still going to be beholden to whatever those those gathering numbers look like from the Department of Public Health uh, or the CDC. And, you know, you got to think about it, you know, McHenry West has over 1,400 kids in it. You, you might have 700 kids in a lunch period. You have 1,000 kids in the hallway between passing periods. So even as restrictions begin to lift, you're still going to have those social distancing, those gathering where you can only have so many students in a certain space. So that's really going to govern uh, whether or not we can have 30 kids in the classroom or we can only have 15 kids in the classroom. So creatively, how we're going to decide, uh, design what school might look like, whether that's for that in-person experience or that digital experience uh, is something that we'll be working on throughout the entire summer. Boy, that's something. Because I, I always, I've been thinking just of classroom size. Correct. I didn't even think about passing in the hallway. Or lunches. Right. Uh, that, wow, that's, yeah, if you're, if you're just talking, if you're just talking classroom size, you could kind of split it and you can maybe figure that out. The, yeah. the issue is going to be, though, you're always going to have mass entrance into the school, mass, yeah. unless you move to split shift models, you you know, different rotational models via your, base, or your uh, belt schedule. But again, a lot of that just depends on the guidance. A lot of it's going to depend where are we as a nation, where are we as a state. And then I think we're going to be flexible enough and we're going to be prepared enough that whatever that guidance is, um, you know, outward of a couple of weeks, we'll be able to, um, you know, do what we have to do to make sure that our kids have the optimal experience, you know, within within the, the bounds um, that we can do and, 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 this, and following those safety guidelines to make sure our kids and our, and our, and our teachers are safe. Right. And some of the other things that people we didn't even think about is transportation to the school. Yeah. You can't even, I mean, how do you maintain social distancing on a bus and how do you keep it yeah. sanitized and how do you get people to the school? So those are all things that. Yeah. Cause they're running multiple routes. Right. For buses. multiple different yeah. schools. Yeah. And how do you disinfect it and how do you get it ready for the next shift? I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, and I think the other challenge that I think schools really have to recognize that if, if schools are required to remain uh, closed in some capacity, um, the rest of the world may be opening up, which means people and our parents are going to be going back to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, yeah. now you have some, some where you've got parents uh, working at home and you have students that are you know, doing uh, digital learning from home. But as restrictions lift, parents will begin moving back into work, maybe possibly to the workplace 
But meanwhile, your your schools could potentially be uh, still have those restrictions in place, uh, whether that be e-learning or some type of hybrid uh, hybrid schedule. So these are all challenges that we have to think about when we come up with a plan, including transportation, you know, and how we're going to get school uh, kids into that environment, uh, you know, not only safely but securely, uh, but also thinking about our community and our parents and what they're going through at that time. It's amazing. That's interesting, That's amazing. right? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> with um, and and you get to see uh, everybody in the in the in the district, of course. Um, and these the young students uh, i have a 10 year old daughter she's finishing up fifth grade mm -hmm. uh, and the way that these kids have just adapted uh, and i don't think enough is is talked about that the students uh, at every level not just fifth grade or whatever but how these kids have adapted to the online learning uh and the e-learning uh, and a zoom i don't know it's probably not called zoom uh, you know but yeah, classes uh it to me is is totally amazing it is um now uh is is that is that just this generation do you think or or you've been involved with school a lot longer than i have um or, or is that just typical of, of students i mean i think there's no doubt that that students are more tech savvy and their ability to navigate a digital landscape uh, is far superior, uh, I would say, to you know possibly other generations, especially this this generation. Um, so yeah, I, I think though that uh, you know everyone needs to get used to this, and and I think that even though schools have incorporated blended learning, we we have you know had uh, e learning in schools and digital devices and blended learning, uh, you know for for a couple of years now. Um, however, I do feel that the students are pretty well suited to it. I think that schools are moving in that direction. Um, so yeah, I mean, but, but either way, this is new for all of us, you know, doing it for an hour a day or three hours a day, and then coming back into an environment where you're with your friends and you're with your, your family and you're, you're going to sports and, and athletics. Um, no one was prepared for this level of just complete total kind of digital, uh, format without any kind of, of connection to, to the, to the building. Uh, and I think that that's, what's going to come out of this. You know, you asked a really good question before that, you know what, you know, when these things happen, I think it pushes. And sometimes education is slow to be pushed, right? I think this is going to push everybody, especially those schools that weren't prepared for e-learning. It's going to push everyone forward in far, as far as their own digital uh, instruction, as far as the curriculum and, and the learning management systems and how they, they house and how they educate and how they professionally develop their teachers. It's going to push all of that forward. But at the same time, I think there's going to be this newfound respect for how much we need that connection to our school building, how important those athletic teams are, how important it is to go to that, that, that classroom laboratory uh, for your chemistry project, you know, manufacturing, uh, broadcasting, uh, you know, engineering, all of these wonderful experiences that students get. All right, while they're in that building, I think there's going to be a newfound appreciation for that too. So while we're going to say, hey, wow, this digital environment, it actually works and kids are learning, I think, yes, we're going to be able to push and enhance that digital instruction. But on the other hand, there's going to be this newfound respect for how important that community classroom is and how schools, public schools especially, are the heart yeah. of every single community. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, watching uh, my two kids, I've got a, a, a junior going to be a senior and, of course, the fifth grader, just watching um, that social interaction that, that they miss um, and, and FaceTime or whatever, it doesn't quite do it for them. So it's, it's, it's the learning to deal with others and, and people's right. space and, and things like that. You're absolutely right. Um, and, and I think, uh, and I can tell by when we talk to, to my daughters that there, there is that new respect for the teachers. There is that new respect mm -hmm. for time being present. I think. Yeah. That's cool. I, I think that's cool. Yeah. Ryan, some of the questions that we're having asked is obviously right now, this is the time of award ceremonies and graduation. Yeah. Um, I just got a text. Somebody's asking me, what is the, what are those looking like? Uh, yeah. How are you going to celebrate the seniors and you know, all of that? Well, I mean, obviously our heart goes out to all of our students. Um, I mean, the IHSA, as you know, canceled all spring sports. So, you know, an entire season was lost for so many of these students. 
but obviously our heart goes out, especially to our seniors, um, you know, who this is kind of their final high school experience. I mean, I think this is probably uh, the greatest experience that they'll have in high school, whether it be prom or graduation or that final spring sport athletic season, or having to have all those senior moments that you're having with your, your, your fellow students and teachers, you know, in school each and every day, um, you know, they're losing that. And that's, that's tough. And, and uh, we, we definitely feel for them and our heart goes out to them. And, and we're doing everything possible to try to either reschedule those events or hold those events in a different way um, so that we can recognize and honor those athletes. We started our Rise Up Light Up where every Friday night we're lighting up the field. You know, we're focusing on a, on a different uh, group. It was athletics uh, a couple weeks ago um, and our spring sport athletes and our seniors. Uh, we did fine arts and, and our clubs and our activities. Um, you know, the other day we're looking at first responders and our teachers, but eventually also just really celebrating the class of 2020 and giving our community something to rally around and celebrate. And we're encouraging all of our families to light up our homes, you know, to celebrate the class of 2020 uh, and really try to recognize them for all the great things they're doing. Now we have rescheduled our in-person graduation uh, for June and July. Uh, we have a June date solid and we also have a July date in the works in case June we can't do it. Um, we also have a virtual gradua uh, graduation um, that we're producing just in case those uh, those in-person graduations don't work out. Um, for things like our award ceremony, like, like the DW ceremony, we're looking to uh, have that virtually and our senior awards nights. And then we've contracted with the McHenry Drive-In uh, so that we can actually all come together and all those families can come together and hopefully watch that production uh, at, the, at the McHenry Drive-In. And so we originally scheduled our date for the 18th. We may have uh, a new date, uh, the 27th. Um, we'll be rolling out a letter here tomorrow or Thursday once we solidify that. Uh, but the good news is we're definitely going to be able to have that award ceremony collectively as a group at the McHenry Drive-In. So uh, now that that is able to open up, that's going to be really good for us. But at the end of the day, all I can say is, you know, we're going to do everything possible to celebrate and recognize our seniors. And as long as we can push off these in-person events to have them, um, we're going to do that. That's great. That is slick. Um, question for you um, <clears throat> along, along that uh, kind of, uh, you know, avenue, I guess. Uh, and, and you kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but somebody asked, you know, hey, is football and Friday Night Lights still possible at all? You kinda, yeah, I mean, uh, again, yeah, I mean, again, I think, you know, the IHSA canceled the spring sports season. Um, I mean, obviously, all of our athletic camps uh, are on hold for the summer at this point. Um, you know, we'll really seek that guidance from the Illinois State Board of Education, from the IHSA. Uh, in terms of interschool athletics as to whether or not we can, you know, move forward with all of our fall sports. Um, and again, we'll just have to see what's going to happen. Um, you know, are, you know, did, does anyone even predict where maybe there's something where you're having the football game, but you don't have any stands, you don't have anyone in the stands, like they're doing, they're thinking about with the NFL. Right. Um, I think there's, there's going to be so many things that we have to consider here. Uh, but again, everything is going to be based on, on what the governor is going to mandate and then how that's going to be interpreted by the IHSA and the Illinois State Board of Education. I mean, it'll make the running game a lot better if everybody's got to stay six feet away from you. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? It'll make the running game a lot better if you got to stay six feet away from everybody. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> yeah. What the whole oh, yeah. Seriously. 300 yard night for him. Right. Uh, <laughs> here's, a, here's, a, here's a good, uh, two good questions, and I'm going to do the first one first. Um, and it's not me or Dawn, uh, but um, <clears throat> it's a it's a potential community member, um, a potential home buyer looking to buy a home in the area. C can you tell? Uh, it says, can you tell me what stands out about District One Hundred and Fifty Six compared to other districts in the area? Sure. Uh, well, first off, I think that with the new framework and the transition uh, to our our campus system here in a year and all of our improvements, facility improvements that you're going to see. And we can talk about those later, we can talk about them now. I truly believe that we have set ourselves up that we are going to be one of the most competitive um, and comprehensive school districts, not just in the area, but I think in the entire state. Um, our Center for Math, uh, Science and Technology is going to not only be state of the art, uh, but it's gonna be one of a kind uh, in the state of Illinois. 
um, and the amount of not only elective offerings, but co-curricular offerings that we're going to have um, are going to be pretty incredible. And those offerings are going to be taught in that pathway system uh, where students are going to get that real world experience to really decide, hey, what do I want to do when I graduate from high school? And our job is to make sure that you are prepared for every option and every opportunity going forward. Uh, and we are just have a multitude of pathways and opportunities uh, for every student that walks through our doors. But what makes us really special is just the sense of community that McHenry has. Uh, and you see it everywhere. You see it from the mayor who was on your show last week. You see it in our kids at the Friday night football games. Um, and we're only going to get bigger and better. And um, that's why I would move McHenry. But as far uh, from an educational standpoint, I, I think we're going to be second to none of the state, uh, especially when we when we finish all of our facility improvements. Yeah, that's incredible. So, uh, of course, this is your home with Bremer and Jones on 21 6 Annette Dawn. If people want to learn more about the community, buying the house, becoming part of this community, how do they get in touch with you? They give me a call at 847 456 6334. They can check out our website at bremerteam.com or they can email me at bremerteam18 at gmail.com. That's bremerteam, one M, two E's. <laughs> Uh, number one eight. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and and Doc, if uh, if anybody's got questions about the school district or things that are going on, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, I mean the best way is to obviously go to our district website. Uh, you can find out all of our contact information there and find out what's going on in the district or Facebook, Twitter, uh, social media. If you need to contact me directly, more than happy to to respond to anyone that has a question. Uh, I am at uh, McTag Ryan uh, at D I S T. Uh, 156.org. Dot dot org. Beautiful. Now, uh, you know, the, the fun thing about, about what's happening uh, in the district, of course, the big thing is, is you know, what's going on with, with the, the high school. And a, a, a question was asked, uh, and I got to read this off my phone because it was texted in. Um, we're all very excited for the new and impressive STEM edition at the West Campus, as you were just talking about, to open next year. Mm -hmm. Given its increased capacity and the reconfiguration of it being an upperclassman campus, um, how how is that uh, socially right uh, now that uh, we'll have uh, freshmen uh, over at the east one and and the tenth, eleventh, sure. twelfth graders uh, at the west? Uh, socially, does that do you see that? Um, tripping up or, or retarding the, the social growth of the freshmen uh, no. and and bullying, I sure. guess, is what they're concerned mm -hmm. about. Uh, so I would say that, uh, you know, first off, we function as two separate high schools. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now, I'm sorry, we don't function as two. We, we function as one high school in two separate locations. Yeah. So we essentially do everything together. Same athletics, same clubs. Uh, you know, same curricular programs, you know, kids are taking almost 45 shuttles back and forth between East and West. And yet you still have this underpinning of East kind of West dynamic, right? Yep. The beauty of this is that you are going to truly now be one school. So the same person that you are sitting with uh, at the football game on Friday night, or the same person you're playing football with or basketball with, uh, you know, on the, uh, you know, every single day at athletic practice, you're now also going to be sitting in the same classroom together, which I think is awesome. So that's going to build that community and build that, that warrior spirit and culture. For our freshmen, I think it's really important. So the, the freshman campus concept uh, is not new. I mean, multiple schools around the state are moving to the, this, this arena, whether it be New Trier, uh, whether it's Neuqua Valley. Um, and, and as we look at these different schools, everyone will tell you that the freshman year is the most important year uh, in, a, in a person's high school career. We're going to be able to not only target those freshmen and provide them with all the support and all the uh, intervention that they need in this really supportive environment as they transfer into uh, from their eighth grade class, okay? Um, to where we can really make sure that they are well prepared for high school so that when they move to that, 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 that sophomore upper campus, they are going to be ready to go. However, we also understand that they have to feel connected to our community, which is why as we begin that transitional plan, we are taking multiple steps to ensure that not only are we getting mentorship um, from our upperclassmen for our freshman students, um, you know, during AIM, uh, our AIM period, a support period, before, after school, during the school day, 
but also making sure that all of those activities, all of those events that we have, freshmen are included, whether it's a pep assembly, uh, whether it's, you know, it, you know you're going to run your, your, your club. Um, we're going to have that at West Campus so that those freshmen can be a part of that club and we're all together. It's not going to be separate clubs, separate. You know, we are going to try to do everything that we can do uh, to bring those students into the upper level campus to connect with other students and really make them feel like they are, are part of our community. But on the other hand, we also see the amazing benefits academically and social emotionally of being in that environment. And then when they do transfer into the upper campus, not only are they pre prepared for that high school experience and the rigors of high school, but then not, you know, we're going to make sure that as sophomores, we're working to help them with that transition too. So they feel connected, they feel good, and they can move forward uh, in the process. So I, I think from a social emotional standpoint, from an academic standpoint, um, we're going to find ways to connect those freshmen and make sure that they're really successful. Um, being able to target them at their own building with all of those resources is, is going to be uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I think that's very cool. Don and I were talking a little bit uh, off camera. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, being part of the District 200, uh, you know, 12, 13 years ago when they split and Woodstock North became a school and Woodstock, and they split the town. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I believe the only the only sports we, we you know, co, co mingle in is swimming and golf uh but the interesting thing is is that it took a lot of good friends and it made a, a i mean it split the town and, yeah and so i i like the idea of, of what's happening here is hey we've got it and instead of making it keeping it two separate separate entities trying you know it's like a stepchild at that point um, you're part of the family, <laughs> no, but you're not, uh, but you are, um, you know, to, to really bring that. I think it's cool uh, that, that you're doing that because, I mean, it, it's fun for sports. It creates a great rivalry, right? but you can have rivalries with, you know, Richmond Burton or somebody. Well, like they were all, we, we were the same athletic teams, though. They, they yeah. didn't, we didn't play on stuff. We were all the same anyway. Yeah. I will tell you, though, it is important to understand that, um, you know, East campus was, you know, is, is fluctuating around 600 students. West campus was around 1,400 students. Uh, we talked about the idea that, you know, we, we just couldn't operate two comprehensive high schools and be equitable and fair, all right? Again, we are running 45, uh, you know, shuttles back and forth trying to replicate classes, and we just couldn't do it. And it was impossible to take that 100-year-old building and be able to build all the labs and all the innovation that they needed uh, at the same time uh, as doing that with the with the with the upper level high school, and so in order for you know every student to be able to have that equal opportunity to take classes to make sure uh, that they could have those same educational experiences, um, this is the best move. And so now you're building this beautiful seventy thousand square foot, thirty lab classroom addition. Awesome. All right, multiple new electives that every single student can access. And it's not going to be uh, dependent upon where you live or what side of town you live on or whether or not you have to get on a bus, you know, and shuttle yourself back and forth. So not only was it inefficient, um, it was costing, you know, a, a lot of a lot of money uh, to kind of operate that system. And the idea that we would go out to the community. All right. And and ask for, you know, these important tax dollars and, and ask for the support and not do something that was going to serve every single child to the greatest capacity. All right, just wouldn't have been wouldn't have been right either. You know, putting band aids on things so that we can still operate in this quasi two school environment uh, would have been really really difficult. So I'm really proud of how things have come together. And now because of it, we are going to basically take um, the freshman campus, and that's had a complete overhaul over the summer, where 90% of all mechanical systems have been repaired. 90% of all mechanical systems. And, and classroom refurbishment will take place at West Campus this summer, along with the new 70,000 square foot extension. Um, and we've been able to do that just with the referendum and some of our fund balance money. So now all of those different things where we would have to spend that money on just roofs and unit events and never on curriculum instruction or new courses, we can now move that into different areas to support our curriculum and our kids um, and things like the track and field or the fine arts or developing a new cooking pathway. And so all of those things are on the table now that just weren't there before uh, we were able to do this campus transition. So in the new edition, <laughs> is there going to be a vape lounge? <laughs> oh, my God. 
There will be not. No, no. <laughs> the floor, there is a patio. There, there is a greenhouse. Okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't even say without no laughing. I, don't, I mean, I don't we know. are going to be a destination school district, but <laughs> yeah. not for that reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. We are definitely a destination school district, but not <laughs> hey, for that reason. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Uh, one of the questions that I have here that somebody sent me that says that is the district at all entertaining the idea of a later school day start time for high schoolers based on research that proves it's in their best interest? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen that research. I love that idea. There's no doubt about it. Um, however, it's just not us. Um, you know, if, if, if we had our own transportation and we could kind of run it that way, um, that's one story. But because we share transportation with District 15, um, which means, you know, in the morning and afternoon runs, everybody has to be on a certain schedule uh, in order to get to school on time. Um, it makes uh, changing our start time to a later date very difficult because we're also uh, trying to get kids to elementary school and junior high as well. Um, I do think that under this new schedule, there will be a little bit um, of a break for, I think, East Campus uh, students formally, uh, who will be starting around 745 possibly. And then also our zero hour students that were getting to school really, really early uh, will now have uh, somewhat of a reprieve too. So uh, we're always looking at that, but it's just not as feasible to do what, you know, to start them at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever it may be. But you also have to consider after school, high school students have so much going on after school um, that, you know, you have to be careful with extending that start time too, for, uh, too much ahead because it could impact athletic practices or contests. It's right. true. That is really true. And their jobs, because they need to have a job. They do. So they can pay for their gas and their insurance so they can get off of our plans. Oh, wait. That sorry. <clears throat> That's a whole show. different show. Oh, different show. <laughs> You're there to play that. That's it. So uh, here, here's the other thing that might surprise people, I think. Uh, your meetings, the school board meetings, are they open to the public? They are. Oh, interesting. So a lot of these questions... Might have been answered <laughs> Have you showed up to a couple of now. I, I can say that because I'm not on the school board. Uh, but here, here's uh, here's an interesting thing, I think. Um, and I challenge people all the time. Uh, you know, they, everybody knows who the president of the United States is. Um, and, and God bless the president of the United States. But the, the effect that the president has on, on your kids and, and, the, and the community here is a lot less impacting than what the school board uh, has and nobody really knows who's on the school board, right? Uh, so I uh, I would encourage all of our listeners and, and families and friends to uh, show up to a meeting or two, uh, and you'll, yeah. you'll find out that uh, the people who run the school district, uh, a lot of them are volunteers, but they're also putting in hours and hours and hours of, of research and and doing diligent work to provide the best atmosphere and learning experience for their kids. And, and I, yeah. I mean, for both of you that are on, on the school board and, and your whole school board, uh, you know, I, I, I take my hat off because it is a lot of work. It's not just uh, show up one one day, pass the donuts around, have coffee and hit the gavel and out the door you go. I mean, you guys you guys do a lot. We, we're, we're really blessed that we have. Uh, I'm not just saying this because Dawn is sitting in the seat over there. Uh, we are extremely blessed to have just a, a school board um, that that has been willing to really not only make sure that they are fiscally responsible, but we're also making strategic investments in our district that are gonna pay off down the line. Like that, that, that digital innovation plan that we passed three years ago. We can see the benefits that we're having now uh, given this crisis that we're in. You know, the, the vision that the school boards had um, over these past three years and the decisions that have been made have really put us in that position here in, in a year or two where not only are we going to be um, that competitive, comprehensive destination district, but from a financial standpoint, we're going to be able to um, continue to support our teachers and our curriculum and our students for many, many, many years to come. Um, you know, without ever having to go back out to the, the taxpayers uh, for an additional referendum. Um, and so, you know, with the thought and just the vision and the planning necessary to do that, um, you know, hats off are to them because not only are they being great fiscal stewards, but they're providing uh, an incredible service to our students and our families who are being educated by, by District 156. That's, a, that's incredible. Go ahead. You got, you um, I was going to ask you, how has the teaching staff impressed you through this pandemic? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, 
and it, it is Teacher Appreciation Week this week. So oh, look at that. Hats, hats yeah. off all of our teachers. Um, little different. You can't put the you know the stuff in their mailbox and stuff like that. But uh, you know, obviously, I think they've stepped up and been really incredible. Um, uh, again, you know, just like everybody working from home, our teachers also have those same challenges. Not only do they maybe have their own kids sitting around the table, but they have 130 kids. Um, that they're not only trying to support academically, but they're also trying to support social emotionally and answer their questions and make sure that they're there for them uh, to build that connection and that capacity um, so they don't feel isolated, so they have some sense of normalcy. And so whether it's just you know having Warrior Wednesday and, 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 and connecting with them on, on, a, on a Zoom meeting or sending out those encouraging posts or sending out the funny videos, um, you know, just being there to listen and answer those emails or, or connect with the kid, um, I just could not be more proud of how our faculty has responded. Um, I believe, you know, most importantly, though, that we have extended the learning process. You know, we didn't just sit back and say, well, you know what? We got two months before school ends. We're just going to focus on material they've already learned. We are extending the learning process each and every single day so that when eventually this does end, and we can move back into our building that we don't have two months of learning loss, hopefully, um, at that second semester or that course that they need to progress and advance next year. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not only proud that, you know, we're not just pushing out, you know, assignments, you know, um, you know, for, for, re for some type of, of lesson that they've already, you know, learned, you know, three months ago, that that new teaching, that new learning is continuing because they understand that next year, all right, they're going to be responsible to move forward and to advance uh, and continue that learning process. So they've done an incredible job um, of being not only that social emotional support, providing that sense of normalcy, but continuing that high level instruction so our kids can continue to be successful moving forward, whether you're a senior or whether you're a freshman. That, that's amazing. And and my hat really goes off, too, to the uh, math teachers because they're going to have to reteach Common Core. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. After all these kids have been ruined by their parents, <laughs> carry the one. That's carry right. The one. That's right. How many parents? You, know, you thought you were YouTubing, you know, secretly before. I mean, now it's like it's, you're just I mean, embarrassed. For me, for me personally, it works out great because I have a 16 year old who's in honors math, and I have a 10 year old. And so when I can't figure out my 10 year old's math, I ask my 16 year old That's to right. teach it for me. It's fantastic. Yeah, there you go. Um, another you know, question that just actually true. was. It, 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 for our kids, you know, you say that, you know, for our kids, what we also made a decision during this time that, you know, this wasn't just going to be a pass fail opportunity that our kids have the ability to advance, yeah. to improve. And last time I checked, we had over three to 400 kids. They're actually improving their grades because they're taking hold of this and, and they're embracing this environment and they're doing the best that they can uh, to improve that grade and be successful. Um, and, you know, we also have student support teams that for those kids that aren't as engaged, not as connected, that we are targeting them, we are reaching out to them, we are reaching out to their families to make sure, number one, that they're okay, but then also ensure and, and ask them what do they need so they can continue that learning process also. So um, it's been an opportunity and a lot of our kids, I'm so proud of our students who have embraced that and have started to do actually um, better and improve their grades in some of their courses. Yeah, I can speak to that because I have been one of those parents that teachers have reached out to me and said, where's your kid on my Zoom call? So yeah, uh, that I can prove that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Let me get I, him out of the trunk. Seriously, I'm like, well, you might need to call some people over here. <laughs> um, another question that I just got was, with the juniors not taking state tests for colleges, how does that, do you have any idea on how they're getting into colleges? Will the schools just do it on grades for the juniors next year? How does that work? Do you have any insight to that? Yeah. Well, so they're juniors, and so they'll be able to take, I would assume, ACT, SAT next year uh, if things open back up. Um, by all accounts, colleges or and universities are going through the exact same thing everyone else is going through, right? They know that nationwide, no one's taking these these tests uh, their junior year. Some of them may have already taken the test. Who knows? Maybe they took it in October um, before the pandemic. But um, I think the, the universities are going to have to adjust their, their admissions policies, no doubt. I think that all juniors will be given the option to take these tests hopefully next year. Um, and universities will, will take this into account uh, for this class, for our seniors and everyone kind of coming through uh, this pandemic uh, moving forward. 
So I really don't know what the guidance looks like on that in terms of how universities are going to change their admission criteria. Um, I think though that we will be providing our students extra opportunities, especially those juniors, uh, to be able to take those, those important tests, whether it be SAT or ACT next year. I also don't know what the, the you know, and, and the ISB will also be extending guidance on, on how that testing is going to take place. Right. That's so funny. Uh, the, just, hey, hey, Darlene, Jimmy needs to conjugate a verb and tell him to chew carefully. Oh, gosh. Oh, I don't Lord. think he can see that. That's uh, funny. <laughs> uh, here's something to think about then, too, and we don't know how this is going to be two things. One is, uh, now uh, it might be easy to go into trimesters and go year round with school. Is, is, have we thought of that, or is that a possibility? Uh, you know, that's not something that that necessarily is on the plate for us right now. Um, I think though that again, you we don't know what this is going to look like. I don't think we can. You know, again, our planning has to be flexible. Uh, if, if at some point this continues um, or it comes back, you know, I think that's the real fear that what happens if, you know, we're able to come back and then we, we get hit with the second round of this and we have to shut down again. Then I think some of those ideas of how do we continue that instruction so there isn't that learning loss um, and we can't just do it within a digital framework. Um, I would believe that all those conversations would have to be on the table. Yeah, cool. Now, the other is with with now the e-learning and, and um, the digital aspect of education, um, might we see a, a higher influx of, of kids actually going to college digitally? Now, yeah. uh, the ones who possibly might not have wanted to because, you know, I, I can't afford to go downstate and, you know, and live in a dorm and, and do this. But, hey, my grades have kind of come up you know, working digitally, yeah. and I might be able to get a, a, you know, a degree online. I think this environment suits students very, very well. Some students very, very well. Um, you know, we have already started moving in the direction of creating blended level classes. And when I say the word blended, it means um, you don't have to do that kind of in-person classroom instruction every single day. Right. So maybe you're, you're in the classroom or you're in the lab one day, and maybe the second day is a blended digital experience. And we already have uh, blended courses. We even have a blended jazz band, if you can believe it, um, where they come together one day a week and the next day maybe they're working on individual pieces and they're submitting video uh, lessons and they're working with their teacher digitally. Uh, and so we already have blended, blended offerings. We were already on track after this year to have really a blended opportunity in every single um, uh, curricular area and expanding that. I will tell you, because of this, um, and moving to this digital learning platform, I think a lot of teachers who might have been resi uh, resident or a lot of students who, who might have taken a pause to taking a blended level, um, you know, class or a digital class that's half and half. Um, now I think they're going to definitely feel more confident in taking that. And I think that our students are going to want more blended experiences. Yeah. Um, they want to stay connected to the classroom in some capacity, but also have that freedom in their schedule to kind of work at their own pace. I think a lot of kids like this kind of work at your own pace, figure out how to do it. And so, um, you know, this is going to push that blended experience. But more importantly, um, because we have went through this, I think it's going to give a lot of, of confidence to teachers that they can teach a blended learning class and a lot of confidence to students to say, yeah, I can take this blended learning class and I can be successful. Um, and I can replicate uh, those same standards and those same expectations that I have by meeting every single day um, in this new environment. Yeah. I tell my kids that uh, the big uh, the big technological advance when I was in school is going from a chalkboard to a whiteboard. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That is true. <laughs> that was true. <laughs> I just got an actual, really a really good, interesting question. It says that if school returns in the fall, uh, what is it going to be the parents' choice to change it to digital learning and not send their kid back? And will there be an option for them to not attend school in person if the parents have fears? I think that's a pretty good question. So it's, it's a really good question. Um, I, I really don't know how, how to answer that. Uh, again, we're, we're going off of right now the, the governor's mandate, uh, the public health department, the CDC guidelines, uh, who are waiting to inform us when it's safe to return to school. 
uh, if parents don't feel that that's an option uh, uh, because they feel that, you know, there's still some fear out there. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that we're going to have to, to look into and we're going to have to uh, figure out what that looks like for those parents. Um, that's not something I thought about, so I really don't want to give it, give an answer. Um, I, I haven't ever thought about that either. Well, that's a really good here's, question. <clears throat> here's, here's the answer that I'll give and I'll speak on behalf of uh, the superintendent. <laughs> please don't, please don't. <laughs> no, He's kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, you, you know, here, here's what I'll, here's what I'll tell people. You have to have faith in, in the school district and the school board to know that the number one priority is the safety and well-being of your children and then to get them educated. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe District 156, Dr. McTagg, the school board would do anything to put your child in harm's way uh, mm -hmm. or not give you at least an opportunity to make sure that your family is comfortable. Uh, so I think um, instead of kind of getting out over your skis is just just understand that whether it's, it's District 156 or whether it's District 200 or whatever school district is, um, it, it's, it's not like, a, it's not like a, an entrepreneur or somebody opening a store for a bottom line. Um, it's always been for the safety and well-being of your children, uh, and, and to give them the proper education that they need to win. So, that and, and I, and I would stress too, that's a, that's a really great answer. And I would agree, obviously echo that, that, you know, we're about the safety of our students and our, in our, in our kids. And even, you know, when we've got the governor saying it's safe to open, you know, and, and again, when, when the governor's standard to fully open, by the way, is that when there's a vaccine. Right. Um, he said today that, you know, phase five is a vaccine. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, we're seeking that guidance to open school to know that it's safe. Yeah. And as from a, from a local standpoint, local control standpoint, if we felt for a second that for whatever reason, it wasn't safe to open school, then, then we would back up and we would have to find that alternative, right? right. Um, but we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. And I know that there's going to be some fear to come back. Um, and I don't want to sit here and say that, no, you're, you're going to have to come back because everything's open now. Um, is there an alternative out there uh, for those parents and for those students? Um, that would be something that I would definitely look into exploring. And I would never say, say no to that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we are going to follow those recommendations, but also look at where we are on the ground in our capacity to serve our community safely uh, before we can fully bring everyone back into the building. Oh, that's it. That's awesome. Um, Cubs or Sox? Ah, uh, Sox. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah, brother. Hey, it's, it's it's Ryan McTagg. I've got a Gavin, a Connor, and an Aiden. All right. Hey, hey. Self Irish. What are you gonna do? Oh my goodness. Boom. Nice. I, did I did live in Wrigleyville. I actually met my wife and we lived in Wrigleyville for a long time. And that was that was a lot of fun. But uh diehard uh, White Sox man. I like them a little bit less, just Oh, oh yeah. White yes. Sox. Episode, uh, Next negotiation a lot harder right there. It's so <laughs> it's gonna be a lot harder for you right now. You oh, will be man. getting a Cubs hat for me. That's, That's right. <laughs> yeah. well, you gotta have something when you um, I have a question. If you were to, I mean, you have a platform here for people to listen. What was, what one message would you like to get to the community right now yeah. during this time? You know, I, you know, for me, the, the message is just, you know, have faith, you know, have hope. And I think I said this before on our last video that, you know, the future of District 156 is so bright, you know, yeah. uh, it is so bright. And, you know, we've always functioned as one school, one community, and one family, and that's not going to change. And we're going to get through this, all right? The construction, you know, every day you see a little bit more being built. You know, we're transforming our facilities. We're transforming our curriculum. We're going to offer our students so many different opportunities. It's just going to be uh, amazing to be that destination school district. So the future is bright. And when we come out of this on the other end, um, we are just going to have uh, a beautiful school, a beautiful district, a more solid family and community. Um, and, and, and it's, it's, you just have to have hope and faith and hang in there, uh, because I truly believe that the best is yet to come. And, and I hope people feel that. And I hope when you drive down that street and you see that extension and you see our teachers and how passionate they are. Um, and how they feel about serving our kids, no matter what environment it is, whether I'm sitting at home on my computer or you're in my class every single day, 
that's the experience that we're going to bring to the table. And that's why District 156 is so special. So the best is yet to come. Hang in there. Um, and, and it's going to be great. Yeah, and, and I love it. And and I know I've got a lot of friends who are teachers. I know they're excited to, to get back at it too. I mean, you, you see a lot of the, you know, uh, before this pandemic happened, you know, the, the teachers who are slapping five and doing things with their students to show how much they care. Um, you know, teachers, they, they, they give an awful lot uh, personally, professionally, um, to, to make sure that your kids have the best experience they can. And um, it's tough when 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 you've been a teacher. I'm a I'm a coach. It's tough to sit by and watch the calendar go, and only have a couple of you know texts or something with your students or your players. Uh, it's it's hard for for teachers as well uh, to understand that a lot of a lot of teachers live off of that togetherness and the energy from the yeah. kids, and uh, and they miss it too. So I, I think that's incredible. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to come out of this strong. And, you know, from a, an organizational standpoint, from an operational standpoint, uh, from a facility standpoint, uh, yeah. I don't see us taking any steps backwards. Uh, I see us moving, moving forward. So there is hope and the future is bright. And I think people just need to put that in perspective. Yeah, I mean, when you went to school, Don, there was a one-room schoolhouse. That's true. That's I mean, true. So, so, so many years ago. <laughs> So, I don't know. so many years You ago. and Laura Ingalls would. <laughs> wow. I know, right? Wow. I know. Uh, tough crowd, tough I'm crowd here. Her. Oh, yeah. He's way, way yeah. older than me. Me and, me and Moses chipping <laughs> over <laughs> the <laughs> That is it. So we got about four minutes. Um, Dawn, anything you want to, to get out there, or let people know, anything happening in the uh, community that you want to uh, bring up? You had some winners. Uh, we do. So we have a couple of contests that we're giving back to the community from the Bremer team. One of the things we're working with is we partner with the movie theater right now. So because it is Staff Appreciation Week, uh, we asked you to go online under either the uh, downtown indoor theater or my Facebook page and give a shout out to somebody who has changed your life or made a difference in the school district. We're going to pin, uh, pick four winners so that we'll get the four movie to go boxes. And we do have a new contest coming out tonight. Uh, you'll see it. It's being released at eight o'clock that if you can go ahead and like the Bremer team Facebook page and post a message of hope, have your kids draw on uh, chalk on the sidewalk, post a picture in your window and put a message of hope for the community. We're going to pick a winner for Friday night and a winner for Saturday night for entry into the outdoor movie theater. Uh, so, and those are going to be uh, hot tickets because they're at half capacity. So messages of hope and messages to your teachers, what's going to be the giveaways awesome. this week. Awesome. That is fantastic. Uh, and of course here at 21.6 to help out the local community, um, if you're a small business owner, if you own a business, any type of business at all, uh, through the shelter and stay, we're offering a 30 second commercial uh, on the house, absolutely free. Uh, cut a commercial and uh, send us the MP3. It'll get played four times a day uh, to really help promote your business, your small businesses, so that when the veil is lifted and you're able to get back to work, that uh, that people know who you are and where you're at, and uh, and we'll we'll flood you with with good yeah. stuff. That's right. Yeah, and how do we reach you? Uh, you can reach out to us at two one six. Whoops. Two, 20, 21, the, uh, 216 thenetcom or send an email to Pete, P-E-T-E at 216thenet.com or myself, Kent, K-E-N-T at 216thenet.com or reach out to 216thenet uh, at gmail.com and we will uh, try to work something out with you, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, just can't thank you enough, Doc, for being here. Uh, Dr. McTeague, of course, the superintendent here at the District 156. Uh, your family now. Welcome back anytime. Uh, yeah, thank you. You need anything from Twenty One Six and that to help you out. Uh, we can certainly we can certainly do that. Um, we'd we'd be glad to. Uh, but yeah. I would love to come back. I'd love to come back. It's been a, a great experience, you know. And I, I really appreciate you taking the time to inform the community. And it's an important time, you know, to get this information out. So anything you need from me or any information, if there's questions, uh, I'm more than happy. Um, I, I really do, again, just really quick want to thank uh, our school board. I want to thank 
uh, our teachers. I want to thank our support staff. We have so many essential workers from our, our food service who are providing meals to kids every single day, uh, to our, our maintenance people that are on site, to all of our construction workers. Um, I want to thank the city and our first responders, all the people collectively um, who are working so hard uh, to move us through this this difficult time. Yeah. Um, we appreciate them so much. And, and I think what's really funny, though, is from everything I've said during this hour, I am going to get the most messages. It's already started. My phone is blowing up for saying I was a Sox fan. So at the end, <laughs> with everything that's gone on, hey, I think that it's the Sox fan that's going to put people over the edge. we yes. got to stick together. Just wait. Sox I'm on fans. air. Wait till that's I get great. off. You'll be getting okay. a call for I've me. already had three board members text me. And, you know, not, not <laughs> <anymore>. <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter referendum, like questioning the whole decision as to whether or not I should have been hired. There's going to be a new interview question at that point. Hey, yes. not, not everybody can be with the winner, right? So that's why we love the stock. All so right. It is what it is. All right. Uh, and, and folks, uh, again, this is uh, this has just been a great hour. Thanks for your time, Doc. Uh, and as uh, Albert Einstein, uh, as Albert Einstein once said, and I lost it, here it is. Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. Uh, and that's what District 156 does is they educate. Uh, and uh, folks, don't worry, uh, this too shall pass. And District 156 is, is already out ahead of this. Uh, and it's just going to be a fantastic uh, time going forward. So, Dr. McTig, thank you so much for your time. Uh, she is Bremer. I'm Jones. This has been Bremer, your home with Bremer, Bremer and Jones. Jones. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, students. Thank you, parents. And we we'll don't forget back. to wave. Yeah, we'll get back on our horse and gallop out of here. That's right. Don't forget to wave, <laughs> Dr. McTagg. <laughs> <laughs>